So obviously, I think. Yeah, sorry, can you start again? Yeah. Uh, apparently, the judge asked one of the photographers which one was Lee Haskins, uh, and the the photographer said, "In the red corner." And I think he asked him a couple of times and said, "In the red corner," and I presume he just thought, "In the red shorts." Mm -hmm. But frightening, frightening that your future can be put in the hands of someone like that. I mean, I don't mean to be disrespectful because he's an old gentleman. And I'm sure he's judged many fights. But that is just, I mean, it could have gone horribly wrong. Could have been recalled and scored. Oh, what, what do you do? You know, you have to go out. Did you mean to put it in the other box? Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah. I mean, he obviously did. It was 10 8. He scored two 10 8 rounds. It's just a Haskins. It's a 10 8. It's a Haskins. But I mean, I went mad for bringing it. Before the decision came out, I went, I went up to the IBF, but he was like, but it was, it was, his scorecard score was excellent. It was just the wrong way around. <laughs> <laughs> and then he really appeared in the Yeah, but I mean, he's active. He's active. We have to do your own research, but I think he's like 80. But I've never seen him not. Then he would be asking for it to be appealed. No, we will be. I mean, I, I presume that it will be on paper a uh, uh, majority of the uh, majority the split decision will be revoked. It would be unanimous to see. Must be. But if it's not, I'll back it for monkeys anyway. I mean, it doesn't really matter. But I just, I've never seen anything like it. Can you tell us about your plans for bringing it up? Yeah, I mean, he's going to have to have a little bit of a break. You'll see him in a minute. I mean, he's a horrific car. Jumbo did a brilliant job on it. Um, he's got a mandatory because Lee Haskins had to ask for an exception to fight Ryan Burnett. So the mandatory is a guy called Emmanuel Rodriguez from Puerto Rico, who is very, very good. Um, so we may, and we can't ask for an exception to fight anyone else because that was an exception. So the only thing we can do is have a uh, unification. So that's what we'll be trying to do next. And I think the immediate focus is then Zaki Arnold, who is Ricky Hatton's fighter, and those two have sparred many rounds together. And, um, the plan is for a unification by in October. And you'll be fighting out of Belfast? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I mean, you know, I want to thank the people of Belfast because the atmosphere was brilliant. And the reason we were able to come, or the reason we were able to deliver the world title to Ryan was because of the fans. Otherwise, you know, it, it's been very hard for Ryan and for us putting him on, you know, Hull, Manchester, Liverpool. For someone who is from a fight city that backs their fighters so much, to have to box him on the road all the time. He's not been built it. You know, he hasn't had Barry McGuigan. He hasn't had the King's Hall. He hasn't had all the smaller fights at the Odyssey as well. He's had to come straight into a world title headline. And I was worried, you know, when he was walking down the corridor, even in the ring, he was really quiet, really quiet, but freakishly calm. And I, I was thinking that he might, he might have frozen because he was that quiet, but he wasn't. He was just very, very, he was freakishly calm. And I thought he executed the game plan. To look good against Lee Haskins is really hard to do. But he outfought him, he outsmarted him, he outpowered him, he did everything. And I thought Haskins was incredibly brave because I didn't think he'd get up from those two right hands in, what was it, six? First not there, six, six. Mm -hmm. And then even in the 11th, he looked like he was out as well. So he'd done well to survive the distance. And, uh, you know, Ryan will learn a lot from that. Yeah, yeah. September of your day for a second. Yeah, well, that, that, would, that would, would, would originally be the plan, but I can't say I'd be ready for September. Well, I don't think October is really this. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, Carl's going Ju July the 29th, so I think that will be his only fight in Belfast this year. So that will give us an opportunity to have a look, you know, space it out a little bit. That's going to sell well. Let people recover from that night, and then we'll go again in October, maybe even November. I mean, Ryan's only, only going to box one more time this year. So if it's October or November, it doesn't really matter. Um, but my other concern is the other lads, mainly Hilo and uh, Tennyson, because they've had good wins tonight, and they can now, I want them to fight the British titles on the next card as well. So I don't want to leave it too long, because they'll be looking to get out as well. Think they'll get more fans then? I hope so. Yeah, we need to, because we're about to start paying in big money then. <laughs> uh, about 5,000 then, mate? No, a bit less than that. Yeah, probably about four and a half, a bit more. Um, but I was very pleased with that. You know, I mean, that was the kind of crowds, probably a bit more, we were getting for Frampton before the first Kiko Martinez fight. That was the night it exploded. We had like 7,000 in.
But for like Molitor and fights like that, it was the same same kind of numbers as tonight. So I think he should be very pleased with that. You know, like I said, not not been built in in uh, Belfast. That's something we got to work on now. You know, we got to do all the stuff that, that Kyle's done. We have got to go to the city hall and you know let people meet him with a bell and that kind of stuff. He's, he's your only world champion at the moment, and he's a good fighter and he's young. You know, he's got a big future. Moving up the weights as well, Michael Conlon. One day, be a nice fight. Isn't it? So yourself around the Dutch women form as well to keep them back here to draw the fans in. Be happy. Yeah. Again, again, again. My one concern was it was going to be a stinger because they're both quite awkward and they're both very intelligent. But I think the cuts actually fired the fight up because both of them were then thinking, if this gets stopped, I need to, after four rounds, I need to be ahead on the scorecard. So they both went at it in the third and the fourth, and then they, they kept going. The knockdown, you know, was was. Uh, a big turning point in the fight, although Haskins was, was ahead, um, sorry, uh, Ryan was ahead, um, you know, and then just, just kept winning it round after round, hurting multiple times. But what really, what I was really pleased about, and it's hard because I look at it from an entertainment perspective, but the smart thing to do from about the 7th or 8th round was just box. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Just win rounds and box. Don't get involved. But he did get involved and he tried to stop him which is good because the fans like that and I was pleased with that because although it was probably the wrong thing to do and I was screaming at him to jump on Haskins and knock him out yeah. like the smart thing would have just been just get through the rounds but you have to entertain and I feel like he entertained against a very tricky and difficult fighter to entertain him Was it the game performance that you've been waiting for? Yeah well we spoke to him but, was like, yeah. but when I signed Ryan Burnett Adam, Adam was like I'm telling you this guy is freakishly good so I'm quite excited yeah. and then we didn't really see it, did we? We sort of we saw good, solid performances, but Adam was always yeah. But I don't know. But that was frustrating because, again, as a promoter, you're thinking about I don't want the handbrakes to be on. Go and take someone's head off. Show you know, entertain. That one of the reasons you couldn't actually come to Belfast. Yeah. Well, 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 the main reason was because of the growth of boxing. So originally it was about could we come in for a British title for Ryan Burnett? Yes. Then no, a British title was not big enough. Then could we come in for a European title? Now then a couple of the performances were a little bit stale, and then it was like, we can only come in with a world title fight. And they're, they're hard to find. We got a Brit, which was good as well, and we got someone that people know him, he's a good solid champion. So, but again, if it was a boring fight, and if it was like he scraped through, we would have still come back, but if you haven't got the momentum to say that you've got someone here that he's very, very good, and actually can go on, and you'll see how good he is against the likes of Zaki Arnov and Rodriguez, um, and I, I believe he'll move up to Super Bank, not yet, but in time. Um, he's, got, he's still got a lot of development to do, and I think confidence as well. You know, again, he hasn't had the people behind him driving him, like the fans, like making him feel like he's a superstar. He's, he's always the kid from Belfast who's boxing in Liverpool. Or, so I think tonight will make him grow as a person and a fighter through having that support. Oh, so there's a great. Oh, yeah, great, right, yeah. But I think also he's a world champion. But there was a moment, you know, they were introducing him, where he sort of stood there, I don't know if you saw it, yeah. like, and you could, it was, yeah. that was good, you know, that was like giving him the energy to realise he's the man, because it's, it's hard being over there, when really, you know, we'd like him here. And he's you, also now given the other boys. Oh, yeah, I mean, listen, uh, I thought, I wasn't sure Paul Harlan would win tonight, because he's quite decent at things now, and I thought Paul Harlan looked average last time, on our show at your club. But I think he had a point to prove, and he, you know, it was a great, great win. Tennyson was hurt badly, and I think the third fight came back in a good. He's going to be a very entertaining fight. Still a baby, be 22, 23, something like that. So um, I don't know how he makes super feather, let alone how he makes feather. I mean, no wonder he didn't, you know, he didn't win that fight. But did you really shoot him straight under the British title after that? I believe so, because you know, Ward's going to fight Kakachi. If Kakachi wins, him and Tennyson's a big fight. If Ward wins, he'll vacate. And I think I think Tennyson will be up for vacant belt. So um, you know I don't see there's many more. He's fought for the, the featherweight title against a very good fight in Ryan Walsh. He's come back with some good wins, Declan Garrity, uh, and tonight against Ryan Dorn. I think he's ready to fight the winner of. Uh, well, I think he's ready to fight Kakachi. And if it's not Kakachi, it'll be a vacant title because Mike Ward's going to beat Kakachi. But then you've got other fighters, Tommy McCarthy. You know, he he's, he can have a shot. At something, 
and really good. You know, Fergal McCoy. I like the look of him. He was exciting. He sells loads of tickets. Good young talent. <coughs> So uh, I think there's really like the pleasure of the host, I Fergal think McCoy, yeah. yeah. But he's saying back. He's you know he went up to his fans afterwards. I mean he had sold about three hundred tickets from a different part of Belfast. Um, he got two Americans. I thought that's true. is it? Yeah. Wow. They moved the GAA much further. Yeah. So they could all come down. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Wow. He's from West Coast. The same yeah. part of the East Coast. Conrad Collins. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. But you you need people like that and. Uh, the thing is about Tennyson and Highland, they'll fight anyone. They haven't been spoiled, do you know what I mean? But every opponent we gave them, Mark Dunlop just said, yep, yeah, because yeah. they know they can't. Yeah, they're not names. So they've got to be in proper fights, otherwise, you know, as you said, you can sell it in Belfast, but there's another audience out there. So that was one of the reasons I didn't want to necessarily just put on matchroom fighters against, you know, other, other, other names, because I wanted to try and, if Ryan did win, we've got a bit of momentum to, to bring the others on. Would that be the same template if you go to Dublin in November for Katie, Teddy? Or? Yeah, but I might bring Katie here. You know, I mean, I was thinking the other day to maybe come here in September and bring Katie here in September and then fight for the world title in November. So, I don't know, would we go October, Belfast, no, November, Dublin? I don't know, but what, what is it, an hour and a half from Dublin? I mean, is Katie still in Belfast? You guys probably know better than me, you know. Actually, why not? But, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, the first thing is to secure a US fight, and then and then look at you know September, and uh, you should definitely fight for a world title this year. Is Zach and Arthur Zach gonna be a pretty easy fight? To make they want a lot of money. That's the hardest bit about the fight, but they're up for it. Um, it's a really good fight. Really, that like, is tough as nails. That is a lot simpler than than uh, uh, Lee Haskins. He comes forward in straight lines, and from the first bell to the last bell, he do not stop coming forward. It's a really tough fight, but Ryan, Ryan actually preferred the Zaki Arnold fight over the, the Haskins fight. He sparred numerous rounds with him, and he really fancies that fight, but I think it's a very dangerous fight. But so is Rodriguez, who's the mandatory, we know one's heard of. Good I mean? yeah. So why not have the tough fight in the unification? Early days for unification, but sometimes options present themselves that you have to take. You mentioned uh, that it could be November, October next for each fight again. Is there a chance to bring Mark's boys over to Britain for fights? Possibly, yeah. Or do a next gen over here, you know, one of our smaller shows, maybe in the King's Hall or something like that. It's an idea. Let Tennyson headline there or Highland or you know, bring a couple of our uh, young young Olympians over, Quatsy and those kind of boys. But again, you know, with car boxing in July, it's going to be very expensive, those tickets. So you don't want them to dig into their pocket too close. To that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> they're doing it here, aren't they? Yeah, they're doing it here. No, Windsor Park. No? Huh? Windsor Park. Are they? It's yeah. funny, I saw a seating plan today for the fight here. Yeah. July 29th. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not having a deal. <laughs> 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 no, but, but it's a but I don't think it's a bad move. If it's not a huge fight, why well, take it out? So, you know. But it will be expensive. Yeah. I suppose overall, it's the first time back in Belfast yourself. Almost three and a bit years, maybe? Four years. Oh, years. I looked at the point. February 2013. February against Kiko Martinez. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, I didn't realise it for so long. I mean, we do the darts here every year. Yeah, that's right, yeah. So, um, but you know, the fans, you know, I kept looking around in between rounds. People like doing the conger and stuff like that, <laughs> you know, like doing all this and like. And I'm glad we actually. Like Sky always asks us for the main event ring walks at 10 p.m. Sure. Because that's the prime slot. But because of all the fights generally go on, you end up ring walking at 10:45, 11, which is probably a bit too late. Yeah. So actually, it was a nice time tonight because if it was 11, yeah. everyone would have been absolutely paralytic. <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah. So we didn't really have any trouble or anything like that, which was nice. Sure. Um, I got loads of people asking me for photos and then calling me a wanker. <laughs> <laughs> Some bloke said, you can again. have a photo of me. I went, yeah, yeah, you went, you're a wanker. <laughs> and I said, oh, thanks, mate, thanks. But, uh, you know, you know what you get, which is like, the atmosphere is brilliant, brilliant. I mean, four and a half thousand, a bit more, but it felt like, you know, that felt like the end. On, a, on a, you know, another fight with 12, 15,000. 
So you say when it's browsing and build here, it's even get four and a half thousand. All right, but you, people, right? people we're, we're very spoiled now. You know, you've got Wembley, you've got Kelbrook, 27,000, Tony Bellew, 17,000. They think that four and a half thousand is like crap. But it's a lot of tickets. Like, we would have, like, two or three years ago, we would have been begging for four and a half thousand. But it's because when Ryan Burnett took 400 tickets, right? Mm -hmm. So at the press conference, the first press conference, he came up to me and I said, Oh, you've got to sell some tickets for this. And he went, Yeah, do you want me just to tell everyone to go to the box office? I went, No. I want you to take the tickets and fucking graft with them and make sure you sell them. So his mate sold the ticket. Right? When we turned up at the wing, normally all the fighters come back with their tickets, you know, and you're thinking, and I put them out of their bag and you think, oh God, and you look at the wedge and you think, and then he's that. Oh, yeah. They pull back. So I said to Mandy, who loves the tickets, go on, how many did Ryan Manette come, come back with? He said, no, none. I went, well, has he paid his money for the ticket money? Yeah, some guy just come in and gave him money. I said to Ron, he went, no, he sold them straight away. I went, you could have asked for some more. <laughs> <laughs> but he said, oh, I didn't know, you know, I, I did say to him, do you need any more? But he sold them out, like, three weeks before the fight. From a guy who, like, when he boxes in England, he don't sell one ticket. Yeah. Not one. In fact, he has more comps than he sells. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Because he's not in that mode. You know, like, the kids, like, Tennyson and Highland and McCoy, yeah, yeah, yeah. they know. They're so refreshing to work with because they know you have to graph the tickets. You know what I mean? You know how many tickets we had back at, to Mandy? Like fives and tens out of 200, 300. So all these lads are grafting selling tickets. And again, if Ryan can sell four, there ain't a lot of tickets that sell, the fighters that sell 400 tickets, personally. Trust, like, I know. Because most of them can't be bothered when they get to that level. But if he can do that without even trying, he, he's got, already got the fan base. I mean, to be, if you can be from Belfast and be a world champion and be successful, you've got a great chance. Yeah. You know, great chance. Lucky, very lucky. Do you see this any as the start of something where you can continue to have boxing here, even beyond Rand, the way you do in Liverpool and Manchester? Yeah, yeah but, but, sort of but everything is stop goes. Yeah, but everything is built around the head like that. So without Ryan Bennett, like if he would have lost him, right, there is no way we could come back. Not with Tennyson, not with Highland. With all due respect to them, they're British title level. They've got to be built into stars. Now we've got Ryan Burnett. So there's no reason why we can't keep going. But all those cities you talk about, it's even like Liverpool now. You know, you've got Tony Bellew, you've got Callum Smith, they're the headline acts. You know, you go away into other cities, Manchester, you know, Crawler got beat, he was the big star there. Flanagan's okay, but you know, good what good fight, but not really selling. So you need you need this the big names. And without them, you can't bring TV there. No, and, and although it's, it's expensive to come here, and early on in the career of Carl Frampton, he wasn't rating, and that was the reason we couldn't come here three times a year. Now that was when we had the incident with, in Hull, where I wanted him to box on the undercar, because he, he beat Kiko Martinez, and Sky said, look, it's very expensive, it's not really rating, can we go back in September? So that was the interim fight. But again, you're at a stage now where if you're in world championship fights, that, you know, Unification fights. It's quite easy to return and get the support of Scotland to be back. Well, right, Charles, let me go and get this kid out. It must be written down. There was a funny moment in the change room, right? Where he was having a photo and he just went.